Welcome one and all to the Math Magic Show. And this one we're going to take a look at the magic of solving a literal equation for a variable. What's the key here? The big idea, the thing you should always remember, no matter the literal equation. Not just this one here, but whatever it is. Apply the opposite operations of the ones that you see. And even though we have letters, just proceed as if you had numbers. That's the key right there, you see? So let me show you an example, okay? Take a look. Here we have... A equals positive P, so I've even, I'm going to stress this, it's positive P plus PRT. Say the goal is to get R by itself, isolate R. Really, just remember all the operations, it's P multiplying R multiplying T, correct? That's important already because you very likely know, before anything else, that the opposite of multiplication is division, right? And the opposite of having a plus one is subtracting. So let's go and get R by itself here as a first step. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to say A, and then because this is positive, it comes over here as negative, like this, so it's A minus P is equal to, if you like, you could be very formal, and you could say P minus P on this side, plus the remaining P multiplying the R multiplying the T. Now, these are opposites. One is positive, the other is negative, so they cancel off. That's going to leave us A minus P is equal to PRT. Now, the R is in the middle between the P and the T. Again, you really stress the operations. This is multiplication right there, isn't it? Now, take a look at this as a reminder, very important, so I'll just put R for reminder here. Basic operations, of basic things that you can do when you multiply. When you're multiplying, for example, like 2 by 3 by 4, it doesn't matter how you group things. This is what I mean, right? If you multiply this out, look, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 4 is... 24 right there. What if you group it this way as an example? Take a look. What if you do here 2 times 4 times 3? So I have just taken the 4 and I'm placing it next to the 2. And the 3 comes to the end now, okay? So like this goes over here and this goes to the end. That doesn't change anything because now you have 2 times 4 which is 8. 8 times 3 is 24 still, right? That's simple multiplication. The question is, can this be applied here, even though this involves variables and this has specific numerical values? Yes, the same logic applies, you see? So what I can do is the following, and that becomes relevant. I can say A minus P is equal to, and just group the P and the T together, and then kind of keep the R separate off to the side. Just like here, for example, I grouped the 2 and the 4 together, if I wanted to, in fact, I could even enclose those quantities within parentheses to stress this. This is what I mean. I could put the 2 and the 4 within the parentheses, like this, you see? 2 times 4 within parentheses, and then at the very end, multiply by 3. And still, I will get 24 in both cases. Makes no difference. Same logic applies here. I'm grouping the P and the T together into a unit. And if I wanted to, I could even enclose them within parentheses. And I'm writing just P and T here without the little dot for multiplication to stress, like, you know, focus on this as one unit. Now what you can do is, from here you can just say A minus P is equal to PT times R, and just divide both sides by PT this way, right here, you see this? So this is PT. Beautiful thing now is PT over PT is 1. Remember, anything divided by itself is 1. So if you say 2 divided by 2 is 1, well, if X divided by X is 1, then that means PT divided by itself is also equal to 1. Therefore, cancel, cancel, and all that remains is that A minus P over PT is equal to R. And then this is the answer. Now, officially, if you like, you should imagine there's a 1 in front of the R, but nobody writes it, okay? There you go. So I, I, hopefully I haven't over-explained this, but there's actually a lot going on with this question. Look at the next part here. So let me separate this down this way. Again, A equals P plus PRT and solve for T. That's the goal here. How do you do it? Again, at the beginning of the video, if you recall, I said apply opposite operations to the ones that are given to you in the question. Right? Always think about those elementary things. They're really important here. So take a look. Solve for T. Well, T is over here all the way. You've got this positive T and you've got this P and R all right, so again, you can do A minus P is equal to, if you want it to be very formal, you got to subtract P from both sides. So it's A minus P equals P 
this P minus a P plus PRT. And as before, these two cancel off. They become a zero. So you just have A minus P is equal to PRT. As before, the nice thing is the T is what we have to find. And notice that, again, this is all just multiplication. As I've illustrated with these really simple numerical examples, the fact that variables are involved doesn't change anything, which means the PR is what you would divide by now to get T by itself. So in other words, you would do A minus P divided by PR is equal to PR times T div divided by PR this way. And as before, PR divided by PR is 1. So all that remains is a minus P divided by PR is equal to T. Right here. Right? This is your answer A. Just like here, this was our answer A. If you look at these two, they're very similar, right? This has PT in the bottom, whereas this has PR in the bottom. That's all. And the last question says, solve for A. <laughs> it's a joke, you see? <laughs> because it's already solved for A, so... <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to be done here, it's already solved for A. That's all I wanted to say. So, thank you friends. Please remember to leave a like, please subscribe, okay? If you need a video, for example, and some additional explanations related to this, let me know, leave some comments down below, okay? I'll read through them, get some feedback from you, make up your own examples, perhaps, and then share your own ideas on how you might solve some of this. I've explained it in a very great amount of detail. Not everybody needs that same level of detail. I appreciate that fact, okay? Some people can do some of this with a lot less detail. Again, completely understandable, but do keep in mind that, especially when you teach for a number of years, you realize everybody's very different, and what might seem simple to some people is not so simple to other people. Just keep that in mind, okay? That's all I wanted to say. So again, please leave a like, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in another video.